Okay, so I'm just setting up for a shoot. I'm gonna go out. I've been uh, surfing all morning at this little bank and it was super glassy and clean and I thought I should have had my housing out there this morning. But I've come back, had breakfast and I thought I'll take out my housing. But I I'm just taking this uh, opportunity to uh, show you how I set up a housing when I don't want to use any controls. So a lot of crew out there uh, use the base Aquatec housing and some other housing brands uh, perfectly house a camera to protect from water, but they don't have these controls on the back. So you can't change settings while you're out there. So white balance, shutter speed, aperture, all that control is um, has to be preset. So um, obviously this one has got uh, buttons for it, but it's designed for my 5D Mark III. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna put my 7D Mark II in there, which fits in there, luckily, but none of the buttons line up. So it's effectively like shooting with a housing without control. And I actually do use my 7D Mark II in this 5D housing a fair bit. And the reason for that is that the 7D has a higher motor drive. So I think it's like 10 frames a second. So when you're shooting barrels, um, you know, those extra few frames a second can definitely get you the shot. It's also got the 1.6 crop sensor, so the um, depth of field, so how much is in focus, is increased with a smaller sensor size. So when you're shooting wide angle, you're not trying to drop off the depth of field and get that um, shallow depth of field look. You're trying to get everything in focus because uh, you're shooting wide angle lens. Um, so that enables that to happen even better. So there's a few little advantages with shooting a 7D Mark II in a 5D housing. Uh, the other thing is um, it would not be possible if I was shooting a 50 mil or anything above 20 mil really, because I can't preset my focus. So the first thing that I do when um, changing over to the 7D in a housing without control is I set my zoom. So this is eight and eight to 15 mil um, millimeter lens. Uh, because it is on the crop sensor, I set it at 10 millimeter, which is around about 15, 16 mil uh, on a full frame camera. So I set my zoom. I then have it in autofocus. I focus, I put my focusing point in the middle and then just focus on something around about the distance that I'm going to take my pictures from. So if I'm gonna shoot uh, super close in the barrel sort of stuff or high action that's nice and close, hopefully there's barrels out there. I think the barrels might have disappeared by now. The onshore might have hit, but um, Anyway, it's all gonna be close close action stuff. So close to the surfer, close to the wave, focus, uh, the wave face. So I'm focusing at about three feet, four feet. And then I slip the dial back into manual focus. So we're now set up for um, fully manual focus. So focus is taken out of the equation. So that doesn't, you don't have to worry about focus. The base, uh, housings from Aquatec actually do allow you to focus, so that's not a setting that you have to avoid. But when shooting wide, super wide angle like this fisheye, I preset my focus, so um, that's one less thing to worry about out there because I know that everything from three feet to infinity is going to be in sharp focus. So focus is taken out of the equation. Um, the next thing is what mode to choose. So I wouldn't suggest manual mode. I would suggest either shutter speed priority or aperture priority. Um, today it's bright sunny day, there's plenty of light around and it's, uh, it's around about 9.30 I think and it's only going to get brighter and brighter and there's no sound, sign of clouds. So I'm going to go into uh, shutter speed priority and choose a quite a high shutter speed. I'm going to, to uh, lock that in at one two thousandth of a second and then I go across to my ISO and I like to go around 250 ISO. I know that the grain factor is not going to be an issue at 250 ISO because um, it's nice and bright. It'll definitely have an aperture to uh, balance the 2000th of a very fast 2000th of a second. So you probably get an aperture somewhere between 5.6 and f8, which is uh, plenty enough depth of field for what I'm trying to do there. So I know now that every time I click the button, it's going to go off at 2000th of a second the aperture is going to come in, uh, either go up or down to, to uh, get the right exposure. 
and my ISO is never going to leave 250. So I know that I've got uh, plenty of quality in the ISO range. Uh, that's the other thing, I set my exposure compensation dead in the center. So I rely on the camera to give me a really good exposure and also shoot in RAW all the time. So if it does overexpose or underexpose, uh, you've got latitude to move either way if you're shooting in RAW in post-production in Lightroom or Photoshop. So that's it, that's how I set up uh, to preset my camera so I don't have to touch a thing while I'm out there. Now all I have to worry about is getting into position, into position out there, getting the shot, and um, yeah, that's all, I'm, that's, all, that's all I've got to worry about. I use a pistol grip so uh, I can hold it out in front of me and just fire away when the action happens, I just leave it down. Oh, that's the other thing I have it. I also have it in set in motor drive 100%, so I don't miss a single frame. So now it's just about getting into the housing and getting out there. Back from a little shoot that we went out on, it was uh, probably a 10 or 20 minute shoot as the conditions had turned pretty bad. The northeast, summer northeast, the wind came in and uh, destroyed the beautiful conditions that I was surfing in this morning. So I'll just have to remember how good it was this morning. I haven't got the evidence anymore, but we got a few shots and went through the entire session without needing to use any of my manual controls. Well, I couldn't because it wasn't set up for that. And uh, yeah, didn't need them. I could concentrate on just shooting the action and knowing the shutter speed priority and my manual setting of the focus and all the stuff that I'd preset with my ISO and high, street, high speed motor drive would capture the moments that I needed and it did so pretty well. So if you've got a base housing, this is how I would suggest you set up for a midday type shoot. Um, I might have tutorials down the track on how to set it up for either end of the day, so sunrise and sunset. But uh, be known that you can, you can do it, and especially with when you're shooting wide angle fish eyes, uh, it's a good setup to have. So anyway, that's how I did it.